Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Gear Talk and this time I'm going to talk to you about this beautiful baby that is the Pentax C45. As usual, before we begin, if you want to support the channel please put a like, subscribe, share with your friends and if you want to go a step further check out my webpage where I have all my books and if there's something that interests you just get them and that will be of great help. This said, the Pentax 645, uh, a beautiful medium format camera, obviously a 6 uh, by 45 centimeters, that was uh, introduced uh, by Pentax in 1984. And uh, this camera is uh, kind of a much modern camera uh, as features. The camera has a window that is able to do 1.5 frames per second, and by the way, if I take off uh, the uh, film back I can let you see. it's not bad at all so the camera is uh, again a modern camera with some other features because it has an internal uh, meter that is a, a medium center weighted meter with, that is very precise and uh, you can see some pictures that I took on my test roll here and uh, there are uh, really uh, those are really um, precise uh, exposure for uh, an internal meter of this kind. The camera has uh, automatic features, so it can be used uh, in full automatic with the program mode or the usual uh, aperture priority, uh, shutter priority, and so on. There's a way to compensate uh, the exposure, so if you go in automatic and want to compensate, you can compensate the exposure, and it's. Uh, really a nice nice camera the camera is very solid and as i said it came out in uh, 84 and uh, it's a uh, kind of plastic outside but it's very very great quality the other great thing is the viewfinder that uh, a lot of people say is dark i think they are not used to medium format uh, uh, cameras of the time because i find it pretty pretty nice and there's an LCD inside so you can have information about the camera. Uh, the thing about this camera is that everything is uh, uh, selected with this uh, button here and uh, you have to get used to that but it's very easy. I mean a couple of rolls and you get used to the camera. Uh, I usually prefer deals for everything but uh, uh, this is uh, very very easy to get used. The camera it's uh, uh, inside is a very complex and nice uh, camera. I bought uh, this camera uh, as spare part. I mean, I had another camera bought as spare parts, uh, and I was trying to fix it, but uh, uh, actually something went wrong. It was uh, probably had some uh, problems of water infiltration, so um, it had some uh, condenser that was. Uh, uh, was really not in good shape uh, and while I was fixing it I stripped uh, a connector so uh, I said okay I can get another camera for spare parts very cheap and so I can uh, from two cameras I can build one but uh, when this camera arrived uh, I noticed that was just uh, the problem was just some uh, uh, cleaning and lubrification. So I cleaned, lubrified the, the camera and this is absolutely perfect. And that's why I will look for another spare parts to fix the other one because uh, it's a challenge at this point. But uh, uh, so I had the option to open the camera and uh, it's very, it's a very complex and precise mechanism. It's very very nice compared to uh, Hasselblad is kind of impressive because you open an Hasselblad and there's basically nothing in there it's uh, uh, very few gears uh, that must be uh, very well uh, uh, synchronized and everything works here is a much more complex camera but really well designed and um, uh, the quality of the camera is absolutely great. Something you have to look for when you buy one of these camera is the battery grip. The battery grip is one of the first things, is the Achilles heel of this camera. Because inside the battery grip uh, uh, you have the system that uh, this uh, 
These things here that keeps the batteries together is just plastic and a lot of time this is broken. Here for example you can see this little piece is broken but is not compromising the functionality of the, the battery compartment. But uh, you must be careful that uh, uh, all these, the battery grip and the battery system are good because without that the camera is basically dead. So, that's uh, the main thing to look when you buy this camera. Another thing to look is this camera has the, these magazines that are not real magazines. Uh, I mean, in Asabat you have magazines for the film that you can change in the middle of the film. In this case it's something that you can preload the film and uh, have it in the container and you can put in the camera in kind of fast way if you have multiple of these but you cannot change it in the middle of the film or you will uh, obviously uh, burn the film so uh, when you buy it uh, you must be sure that you get uh, a back that is for the film you use there's a 120 uh, 220 and uh, um, 70 millimeters it, to find a 220 film right now it's kind of difficult so uh, be careful that the, the, the back is for 120 film uh, because uh, you can find very good offer online with the 220. So this is uh, uh, one thing that you must be careful. Another thing you must be careful if you buy this camera is this battery down here. Uh, check that the compartment is good and there's no corrosion and so on because uh, uh, in theory, is battery just to keep uh, a memory of the settings. In practice, on some 645, without this battery, the camera quit to works. Uh, I have no idea why. On some cameras, it's not a problem. On other, it's a problem. So, uh, check that too. And uh, all the said, this camera is great here you see it with the lens that is a zoom is a 80 to 160 millimeter lens and uh, it's pretty good it's uh, very sharp and uh, it's a uh, it's good lens um, i got this because it was with the camera and it was absolutely cheap but uh, there are plenty of great lenses prime lenses for this camera and i'm looking for to find some of them as a spare part to repair so uh, at the end of the game really great camera if you want to enter the world of medium format uh, without spending a ton of money you can find these cameras relatively cheap uh, as uh, used especially this is the first version uh, Pentax uh, came out in uh, 97 with the 645N there was uh, a new version that had how to focus and uh, the um, exposure meter was a matrix uh, exposure meter so much more complex uh, with uh, much more features included something that I love that is uh, the ability to print the data of the picture on the border of the negative and it's the same feature that you can see in the Pentax MZS that you can check the review here they made and I love that when you take the pictures it writes uh, on the border of the uh, of the frame it writes uh, down uh, all the settings it's very useful it's very nice for the archive so uh, 645N is a uh, kind of uh, more difficult to find a good deal on them but you can find them online and uh, uh, in 2001 they came out with the 645N2 that improved in other aspects included a feature that here is missing that is mirror lockup uh, here you have the um, preview for the depth of field but there was no mirror lockup so it's not uh, a camera for uh, precise work in a certain way it's the perfect camera to just go around take picture easy to use very comfortable in your hands and uh, you can take a little bit more photos because uh, a roll film uh, 120 film is 20 exposure if I'm not wrong so it's the double of the uh, Pentax 67 and uh, uh, that can be important when you learn when you start uh, with a medium format to have a little bit more frames to have fun with so great camera will I use this instead of Hasselblad or Pentax 67 
I don't know. I mean, yes, for some things, but for me, the format 6 uh, for 5 is just uh, 2.7 times the 135 millimeters, the 135 format, so the 35 millimeters. And uh, uh, this is a little bit uh, too small for my taste. But uh, uh, I like uh, larger formats, so 6x6, 6x7, and I love to go 4x5 or 8x10 with view cameras. But this is absolutely a great camera and a great deal that you can find around. And as usual, uh, being a Pentax is uh, underrated. Pentax made great, great cameras, but uh, in some way never um, got to the trendy level of uh, other cameras. You see other brands now that are really overrated, especially in the used market. Pentax is underrated, so you get a lot of camera for the money. So it's something that I really suggest to use. This said, I hope you enjoyed this review, and as usual, if you want to support the channel, please put a like, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want to go a step further, check out my books in Jade to Fine Art Printing. It's the last one I wrote and it's everything you need to know to do great fine art with your inject printers. And it's kind of great also if you use film because you can scan and print digitally if you don't have a dark room. Uh, photography, dev manual, all the basics of photography that you need to know. And last but not least, lasting photographs a novel with very good review and uh, obviously the base of the story is a photographic story. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time with another camera and another video.